Good morning. I talked to some of you this morning and uh, so we'll try to give a different twist to this presentation. The purpose of my coming here today is to talk about Rockford and talk about some of the new programs that we're trying to offer for your professional development and your future. So I remember coming here in 2003 uh, when Don Manzulo used to be there. We had all the stakeholders get around on a table and we talked about the declining manufacturing industry in Rockford. We promised that we're going to do something, you know. Uh, after that, I could bring in about $15 million from Washington to Rockford. We designed the supply core, supply chain at the company, and we also tried to rejuvenate manufacturing. And then we participated in projects such as Digital Manufacturing and Design Institute in Chicago. And we also tried to open Iger Lab. So we have done a lot of work for a long time, but the missing piece of the puzzle was that we did not have a university and programs in Rockford. Even though we've been working with Rock Valley College for the last 10 to 15 years and we have a two plus two programs that articulate well and provide a seamless transition from your programs to NIU, but we've not been able to bring the programs here in Rockford. Just to tell you, almost 150 of engineers at UTAS are from NIU. Same with Woodward. So we have a history of providing technical workforce to the community of Rockford. What happened was when Woodward decided to expand, we talked to the governor, we talked to their CEO, one of the issues that they were facing was how will we get technical workforce? Because it is the belief of corporate leaders that unless and until you have an engine of research and an engine of innovation and a, a, a critical mass of people who are thinking all the time, the company would not go ahead. There are three aspects to running a company, right? One is to maintain the production of existing products. Second is to maintain growth of the company by creating new intellectual property, by investing in new R&D. And the third is to have some sort of stability and an expectation that the community will have enough workforce for the future. So this is not just this community that is facing a challenge of not having enough technical workforce in the future. I shared this statistic with you that we are less than 5% of the technical workforce of the world and yet we are the, the most advanced economy in the world. It doesn't sit well. Every company in our country, be it Caterpillar, John Deere, Motorola, IBM, just name it, needs engineers because that's what engineers do. They innovate. They think of new strategies. They not only make manufacturing better, but they also make every other profession better, right? If you walk into a hospital, can you imagine doctors being able to do their work without a CAT scan machine, MRI machine, X-ray machine, blood testing machine, and injection? That's all designed by engineers. The computers are designed by engineers. Look at your household, your cell phone, your TV, your washing machine, your cooking range, it's all designed by engineers, manufactured by engineers. There are three major issues for the manufacturing in the United States. The first one is going to be data analytics. How can we use data to make manufacturing much more advanced and much more informed? The second one is 3D printing. How can we create products in a much more advanced manner? And the third one is going to be advanced manufacturing. How can we bring in advanced processes into creating new products? That's when they need you. You understand latest software techniques. You understand technology. You think differently, you don't think like me. You think out of the box. When Steve Jobs and, and Bill Gates founded their companies, they were your age, they were not my age. People at my age are used to thinking in a particular fashion. We want people like you who can think out of the box and create a synergy of what the expectations of the companies are and what you could do to the company. So starting fall 2016, we will be bringing four engineering and technology programs to Rockford. Those classes will be offered in this building. We have identified 10 labs that will be upgraded so we can claim that we are teaching a four-year program at a community college. This doesn't happen often. I think this is going to be a national model. I serve on the Manufacturing Institute of the National Association of Manufacturing. I also serve on many boards. Almost 65 to 70 percent of the manufacturers feel that they're not getting the skills that they need for their companies to move forward. They want to sustain their operations and they want to grow their operations. So we had a conversation with all the aerospace industries. You know that we created a network here called RON, Rockford Area Aerospace Network. It is 150 companies that have come together as aerospace cluster. They want technical workforce. They want you to be working for them. 
Do they want you to work with a two-year degree? No. They want you to have bachelor's degrees. They want you to have master's degrees. Because unless and until you are empowered through higher education, your contribution is not going to be at a level where they are expecting your contributions to be. So in our conversation, we decided we will start with four programs. This is just the beginning. So we will have a bachelor's in electrical engineering. We will have a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. These will be day programs because they are, they are extensive programs. They are ABET accredited programs. We have to maintain the highest possible quality. And everybody who is a stakeholder in this process wanted that to be a daytime program. So this place looks like a four-year university. Then we have a program in applied manufacturing that doesn't require any calculus, that requires only up to trigonometry, still gives you a job up to $65,000, $70,000. So that can be a three plus one program. You can start working after two years of associates in applied science, come back to community college for one more year, complete three years of education, that's 90 credit hours, and then come to NIU for the fourth year. So the three aspects of this program are to make higher education accessible, to make higher education affordable and make higher education cater to the needs of diverse student body. So we are making it affordable by letting you take two years at Rock Valley and then two years at NIU or take three years at Rock Valley and come for the fourth year at NIU. So you can complete a degree in engineering at the baccalaureate level for less than $40,000 if no scholarships were available and nothing else was available. Every company in Rockford has promised us they will give you scholarships. They'll give you internships so you can make money during summer. Put it back in your educational uh, track. So it's going to be less than 40000 and you will start with a job that pays you up to $70,000, which is not bad. I talked to 500 companies. We have a network of 500 companies. In DeKalb, we have about 2,000 students enrolled in the College of Engineering and Engineering Technology. Their placement is close to being perfect. In my conversations with CEOs in this area, they tell me that they're going to have between half a million to one million jobs in the next 10 years. As a country, we only produce 57,000 engineers. So if in this particular region, the demand is, say, half a million jobs, how will we satisfy those jobs? So every community is going to be deficient in finding technical workforce. Naperville is not going to send people here. Chicago is not going to send people here. Boston is not going to send people here. We have to grow our own. You are the best promise for this region. You are connected to this region. You are connected to your high schools. You are connected to your families. You are connected to your friends. It makes sense for us to give you opportunities so you can really grow professionally and be a part of the technical workforce in this region. So all the classes will be offered here. All the classes will be offered by full-time faculty members who have PhDs in engineering. The labs will be used here. In addition, if we need to use the labs in DeKalb, or we need to use labs of UTAS, Woodward, Kenny, any company here, they've said you can come in and have a field trip or use our labs. You will never find this kind of an opportunity again in the future. The reason I wanted to come here myself because I wanted to hear from my mouth that our journey is going to be from recruitment to placement. Our journey is going to be of providing affordable education. Our journey is going to be to satisfy the workforce needs of Rockford connect you with an employer, to connect you with an alum, and make you as successful as you can. There are about 150 of our graduates already working in UTAS. I met with them last month. All of them want to be ambassadors. All of them want to be your coaches. They all want to be your mentors. So mentorship is something great, but once you connect with them and they have a job in their division, who do you think they're going to hire? So this just makes sense for us to connect you with the real world. The most important thing that many people don't realize is that once you have this connection, the problems that you discuss in the classroom are going to be real life problems. They're not going to be theoretical problems coming out of a book. Because these people will bring up, with, bring up product. 65% of what we do in DeKalb is practical and suggested by industry. So with scholarships, with employment opportunities, with internship opportunities, I think it's going to be much less than $40,000. But I think this is a time to invest in your education because engineering is a profession that is not only needed in Rockford, but it's going to serve you well. It's a profession that helps every other profession. It is the foundation of innovation in our society. Few examples of what we are trying to do. We are in the process of curing tremors in a Parkinson's patient using active vibration control in mechanical engineering. We are trying to create a snore flea pillow and we have entered into a partnership with Simmons from our electrical engineering department. A 
if you snore your spouse or your partner will not be able to hear that snoring will catch that air, the, that noise in the air and cancel it through a signal processing we are trying to look at a premature baby in an incubator and trying to reduce noise through active noise control so the baby is comfortable and doesn't lose his or her hearing capability we are doing great work in homeland security we have looked at city of chicago and we have created a complete disaster preparedness model that if god forbid something happens we exactly know how many people will be on the street how many emergency vehicles will be there this is just an example of what research goes on in the field of engineering one of the research is trying to uh, work on uh, uh, sitting on a chair and looking at the uh, health of your heart through pressure transducers and I was the guinea pig so these are amazing things that will change the lives of people we have people who do nano sensors nano coatings so I've told them I said if you can create a nano sensor that can smell E. coli or sense salmonella and if it can have a pigmentation in the aluminum foil and it changes color can you imagine this is the billions of dollars, dollars of industry basically we have to create a sensor we have to create a pigment in the aluminum foil and when they sense E. coli or salmonella the, the pigment changes the color of the wrapping so these are very common things but very practical things very few people think that engineers do that that's what we do we create innovation for the world it pays as well and the perception of the world out of engineers is you must be pretty smart see when I tell somebody I'm a dean of engineering the first impression they have is you must be pretty good in math and science you're smart at your age it doesn't matter at my age it makes a difference the social perception of your profession is very important last but not the least in a global environment this is one of the last fields that is accepted universally no matter where you go suppose you work for Omron I just met their CEO in Japan and they want to send you to Japan. What is a degree that's going to be easily transferable? Engineering. Technical fundamentals don't change. Newton's laws don't change. Thermodynamics doesn't change. So this is a degree that's going to be relevant not only for the success and sustainment of our country, but also is going to be globally relevant. And I think the, 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 the way American education system exists, you will be in demand on a global basis. Will you be able to exploit all the opportunities with a two-year degree? I don't think so. Two-year degree limits your progress. It gives you basic an hourly job, but it restricts your advancement at the managerial, at the director level. Exceptions are always there. What we want to do is to give you three plus one or a two plus two model so you can continue uh, your baccalaureate degree. And we also have a master's in industrial management and engineering management online if you wanted to. And in 95% of the cases, the companies will pay for it. So we, the fourth program that we're going to offer here is a master's in integrated systems engineering. And I think most of the companies will pay once you start working with them after completing your bachelor's degree. So affordable program, accessible, no barriers in the admission process. You will be in the College of Engineering as their student from day one. It's not that you'll be pre-engineer and then you'll have to jump through 10 hoops and then we'll decide what you want to do. We want to give you admission on day one and we want to recruit women and minorities into the program. We have a program called We Matter, Women Engineers Matter. We are redefining diversity by replacing S with a C. Because if you're a competent engineer, nobody cares what you look like. So that's going to be our definition of diversity. And we are launching a new program called E-Pride, Engineers Pride. Pride stands for five attributes of student success that we determine the success from. P stands for placement, R stands for readiness, I stands for internship, D stands for diversity, and E stands for engagement. So we will engage you with somebody who's successful. We will engage you with somebody who's a leader in your community. And we will hook, we'll hook you up with them so you can have a sustained dialogue, you can talk to them, you can be mentored, you can, you can be given opportunities in those companies, and down the line you can become successful. So I want to share this story with you. If you do not get enough students in this program, all this investment of $6 million that your community is raising is going to go to a waste. We want that investment to be of benefit to you. So we want you in the classes. So the advanced, the applied manufacturing and the master's program is going to be the evening and the weekend program. 
and the BS in WE and ME will be daytime programs and all the companies have assured internship throughout the year or in summer they've also promised co-op if you want to go work for them for a semester then come back following semester we'll work with you. This is just the beginning if there is need for specialized courses we'll bring them here and get you all the opportunities that you need. Any questions for me? Yes. I'm just a little bit curious. In Rockford's case, how did the program kind of get going? Did the companies come to the schools, or did the schools like see the need in the in the Rockford community and decided to approach the companies? Everybody's out? connected. We are talking to Rockford Public Schools. I've talked to every private school. We are starting project lead the way in those schools, so we can have pre-engineering courses being taught at the high school level. We are trying to have a dual credit program between RVC and high school, so they can earn credit while they're in high school. The problem in our high schools in our country is three P's: perception, pipeline and preparation. They're not being prepared in enough numbers, they're not being prepared well, and their perception of what manufacturing is not right. So everybody in this community has become a stakeholder. They've all gotten together, they're all working together. Like in DeKalb, we work with 400 high schools. We bring them for tours. We, we tell them what we're trying to tell you so they understand what is their future. And then once they come into college, we connect them with the industry. So the education becomes much more practical. I don't want to be a school where you know you have to have a 32 ACT in order to get admission. I don't think that's the purpose. At the stage of my life and my age, I want to make a difference for a common student who has the potential of doing excellent work. I don't mean to say in a negative way, but our journey is always from mediocrity to excellence. I don't care what ACT you have. You can have 22, 23, 24, or 3.0 3 GPA, 2.5 GPA. My job is to bring you to a level where you can compete with an Notre Dame graduate or a University of Illinois graduate. We do it every day. So we want to replicate that journey here, bring that excellence into your academic progress, and connect you with Rock Valley College so you become empowered with education and opportunities. We are, we are, there are three ways we are recruiting students. We are talking to high schools. My staff and other members are talking to those high schools. We are talking to you. That's number two. Number three, we are talking to people who graduated. The associates in applied science and are limited. They're working on the production floor on an hourly job. They need to come back. Let their companies pay for their education and then grow. Become managers, supervisors, directors, vice presidents, CEOs. Right? Questions? More questions? So how many of you will enroll in those classes? Raise your hands. Good. Don't, don't think it's expensive because you need to invest in yourself. So I always say, if you don't think that you are good material to make an investment in yourself, there will not be an opportunity for you to make investment in anything else. You are the most important resource you got. And I can tell you higher education, I'll tell you from my own experience, is going to make wonders in your life and in the lives of your partner and your children and your family. You had a question, sir. Yeah, how is the NIU engineering compared to the other top engineering programs? We are accredited by ABED, so we maintain the highest possible quality in the country. Many of our engineering programs have been accredited since 1990. We were established in 1986, so we are a younger program, but we are ranked in top 50 in the country by US News and World Report. And the placement is 100%. We work with 500 companies. And we have so many intellectual property patents being commercialized right now. People ask me, why are you here? What is in it for you? There's nothing in it for me. I can tell you, I can assure you. I told the class earlier this morning, it's my anniversary, but I think this is more important. Because I treat you, some of you, as my children. You are our future. We have to do everything possible to create that opportunity of higher education and professional development for you. If we don't do that, I think we'll fail, and our country will fail. I know of companies that are getting workforce from outside. That doesn't need to happen. We need to save these jobs. We need to grow these jobs. We need to take a leadership of all the jobs across the world. And that's what we're trying to do. Like I said, we've grown by 60% over in DeKalb in the last 10 years. I'm not desperate for students. But Rockford is desperate for students. Rockford is desperate for educated technical workforce that is capable of making a difference in innovation and R&D and maintaining the production and operations.
correct? Well, thank you so much for giving me your time. This is always a great opportunity to see how excited and talented our young people are. I've all, always seen my children, I've learned from them, but I think you are, you are a different breed of students. I mean, your generation thinks through technology. I never used to text my sibling. You guys are good in technology, you think differently, and that's where a new wave of innovation and new ideas is going to come. And engineering is a foundation for any country. We need to have enough engineers in our country in order for us to be of any relevance in the world. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I assure you that the programs in Rockford will be as good as in Nikal or as good as any other program. I assure you, you will have opportunity of guaranteed interviews and job opportunities with companies in Rockford. If Rockford companies don't have that many jobs and we have humongous number of students graduating, we have 500 other companies that will be more than willing to hire. Thank you and have a good day.